for Irving Ruan. Now, he has something on his bio that really impressed me. He's, and this is what he says, and I want to quote him verbatim. He's an avid engineer who deeply believes that we all have a moral obligation to make a positive difference in the world. And Irving believes that we all have the capacity to inspire change in those around us, no matter how big or how small of import it is. So I like the way that's been, he, he's worded that uh, in his bio. The topic of his speech is pursuing talent. And what interests me is that he is a generation, generation Y, and he doesn't have any slides. So please help me welcome Irving Huon. <laughs> Ah, uh, that's right, I don't have any slides. Um, I know I don't really fit the typical TED speaker umbrella. Um, I don't really look wise, nor do I have a beard, but uh, that's okay. Um, I'm not a Nobel laureate. I have not been awarded a Fields Medal. Um, I haven't made any great contributions to research or industry. I haven't even graduated from college yet. But I have learned perhaps the greatest thing I will carry with me for the rest of my life. through various friends and role models, such as my friend Brian, and by my own aspirations, I have come to recognize the undeniable importance of pursuing talent. Before I entered college, I didn't know what I wanted to do with my life or career. I was just an average kid, without any big goals, without any big dreams. It seems all I wanted was this college diploma, without a care of where I'll be after I graduate. But then I asked myself, what then? What next? What happens when I graduate with this arbitrary slip of paper and I start asking, did I accomplish anything great? Did I find something that I like to do? Did I find something I can be passionate about? And these questions were a bit unsettling. It started racing through my mind and I realized I didn't want to leave college with this mindset. I realized that there's more to life than earning a degree. So I suppose I was you know, fortunate enough to find what I love to do while in college. There are a few um, who even find this at such a young age. But majority of students don't find this. And in fact, I don't think we really have an atmosphere that helps cultivate this search, this discovery. And it's kind of unfortunate. Imagine Michelangelo not being allowed to explore his love for art because his step-parents forced him to study more grammar in school. Imagine Mozart not being able to pour his heart into his compositions because the preferred profession back then was being a scholar of science. Or the plenty of others throughout history that did not get to pursue their passion because of some societal stigma. I think we'd be living in a very boring world then. I recently, recently saw a TED talk given by Sir Ken Robinson, whom I deeply respect, in which he was evangelizing a radical shift of our educational system, a move away from an industrial mode of learning to an organic mode of learning, a revolution, not an evolution. I thought about his words a little bit. And perhaps we should start investing in human capital instead of big business. Perhaps we should start encouraging our youth instead of pushing them. And the fact of the matter is, is that at the end of the day, human capital is worth more than any stock any trust fund, or any corporation. When we think of the, about the big picture future, we tend to conjure up grandiose images of flying cars or advanced space travel and you know, autonomous robots. While that future is an alluring one and presents many, many fascinating doors for us to unlock, we must remember that the key to those doors is not in our government, it's not in our money, and it's certainly not in business. That key, people, is today's young generation. <clears throat> Excuse me. So with that, I want to also say that with education, we can accomplish many great things. And I truly believe that by having our passion, by finding our passion, we can do remarkable things. So what I'm trying to say is that a friend of mine, for example, recently just discovered his passion, recently just found out his interest. And he was majoring in chemistry, and I asked him out of curiosity, why are you majoring in chemistry? He looked at me in the eye, and he couldn't give me a clear-cut answer. Instead, he decided to cite his parents as being one of the major forces responsible for why he was majoring in chemistry. I was sad to hear this. I was sad to hear this, not necessarily because he's one of my good friends, 
but because he's part of the countless others of out there who are doing something because either their parents have told them to do it, or because society has told them it's the right thing to do it, or for whatever weird reason they're doing it. So I decided I want to help him out. I, I asked him, what does he love to do? He told me that he loves technology and computers, so not to be biased or anything, but I suggested that he should take up programming and see where it takes him. He did, and lo and behold, he loves it. He loves it not necessarily because he's good at it, but because it's one of the few things he's done in his life that he can feel proud about, that no one has told him whether that's good or bad for him, right or wrong for him, or whether he's gonna make a lot of money from it. No, he did it because he found passion in it. He found a genuine love, a genuine thirst for this knowledge. And I was really impressed. I, I found that this is exactly what we should be encouraging in today's youth, exactly what we should be instilling. But the, the sad part is that we're not. Aside from writing software or engineering, um, I love to encourage my friends and colleagues to pursue what interests them. And it seems that many of them don't for some reason. If one person right now decided to drop out and make a career from joining a band or something instead of studying medicine, and then I think we should be supportive of that. If a person decides to make a career out of writing instead of studying particle physics, then that's great. I think we should help people chase their passions, not hinder them with these stereotypical definitions of success. If a person right now dropped out from college to pursue a career in art, I think we should change our perspective from that of looking down on this person to that which admires him. Because at the end of the day, we're, we're too wrapped up with our illusions of grandeur or our money that we tend to forget the very essence that makes us human, this spirit, the, this spirit that allows us to excel, that drives us to be the best. And this is important. This is what gives all of the advancements we have seen today on, on all these wonderful presentations, this very innate passion. And it's kind of startling to see that not a lot of people have it. In fact, we should, we should try to encourage that in many people. So to top it all off, you know, I've, I've witnessed a lot of people, you know, who love what they do. And it's really, really remarkable to see such dedication and passion. In fact, it's a very humbling experience. The joy that overwhelms their face when they are doing something they love is not measurable. Passion is not something we can grade. Passion is not something we can put a patent on. And passion is certainly something we cannot take away from a person, no matter how hard we try. So I know I'm not the best in the world. I, I never have been, but I'm content on the inside knowing that I found something I love to do. And I think at the end of the day, that's all that really matters. Are you doing something that you love? Are you doing something that excites you, that energizes you, that you can feel happy about, proud of? Because if you're not, then you might need to do some rethinking. But if you are, then you're set. I don't think that the future okay, is lies with our technology necessarily or our science or our money. That, that's all great. You know, I, I think it's wonderful that we're having that. But I, I think that we're, we're missing basics. And that basic is just people. You know, it, it's, it's, it's really people. And when you think about it, what, what allows us to have all these great advancements, all this progress society? It, it's getting people passionate about what they do, doing something great, and solving a problem and doing all this stuff. And why is it that people do that? It's because of this drive. And it doesn't matter if it's as small as helping a, a fellow friend unearth his passion or to as big as build, building a school for poverty-stricken children in Uganda. I think we all have the capacity and moral obligation to encourage others to pursue their talents because that's so fundamental, so key to our very human nature. In my opinion, that is a big picture future. Thank you.